Hello and welcome to this month's painting tutorial. This month we're going to mix it up a little bit and I'm going to show you step by step how to create this finished landscape painting. So I'm going to begin with my watercolor block. This is a 7 by 10 inch block but you can work whatever size you want. And the first thing I'm going to do is use some pieces of masking tape and mask off a rectangle. This will protect the edges of the painting so that when I am finished, I'll have nice, clean, white margins. Okay, when the painting is framed to the dimensions that you want to work in, get a pencil, you don't even have to use an artist's pencil, and sketch out the largest shapes. So, we have this line of the building, I'm going to sketch first, the top and the bottom here. I'm going to give myself the indication of where this top of the shrubbery goes and then the shape of the large umbrella and sort of fill in some smaller shapes from there. Start at the center of the top line and this is about where the building starts to angle out. Then I'm going to indicate where the bottom goes and then I'll rough in that line between those two reference marks. There's a little divot in the roof right here. So that's the top. The umbrella is going to break in right at that point and going to go clear across to fill up about this much of the watercolor paper. Then the bottom of the umbrella is about here. And I can add a little bit of detail in the inside of the umbrella with a few marks like this. Now this is the vertical side of this building and then the flowers are going to be a roughly here ending at about that halfway point and I've got some chairs then I've got a little archway visible here and the top of the balcony roughly indicate the breaks of these and the shadow shape is going to go about here and then I have these two doorways or windows, whatever they are. And the top of the windows needs to follow the perspective angle of the top of the building. Then I have this little fenced in garden thing up here and I'll just scribble in roughly where I want those flowers to go. There's a second umbrella peeping behind this one and then a figure sitting down to lunch another figure sitting about here two smaller figures in the background here and then very small figures right around here and that might be enough details for me to go on right there now let's add some paint so when you paint you paint from back to front the thing in the farthest background is the sky so I'm going to mix some, some straight cerulean blue and I'm going to add just a bit of that blue to the top of the page just like this then that's very bright I'm gonna wash my brush out and go back into that blue with a wet brush and just drag the color down see how it dilutes naturally as I drag it very easy I'm going to fill in right over the top of any pencil lines there done let it dry now, once that sky is painted in, we need to move to our other big shapes. So the big shape of the yellow building here, and this orange here, and possibly some of these greens. But what you have to be careful of is that you don't have wet color touching wet color. So I'm gonna go in with the largest flat brush I can, and I'm going to mix up a mixture of uh, yellow ochre and Aurelian yellow. So I'm going to put that down all the way down to the plants. Mix in with a little bit more yellow. Dot that yellow in. And then I'm going to rinse it out to make that color a little bit less intense for painting the farther the edge here that's farther away. So edges that are closer to the viewer should be brighter 
and as it retreats to the distance they should become a little bit more subdued and that's one way that you increase the realism even when you have a simple style like this. Now I'm going to paint the top of the building here working around these hedges and I'm using the same basic color but I increased the red a little bit so it's a little bit different and I'm just going to cover the whole area here with this same color and into that wet color drop some more intense reds especially in the foreground so the side of the building that's closer to you and let that just spread out diffuse on the page underneath the umbrella that color gets really subdued again so I'm going to mix up a lighter yellow and just paint that in around the umbrella and leave a couple of spaces down here for plants I'm going to rinse it out even more and add a flat ground tone as well so this is going to be the dirt ground in the background and we're going to turn that into buildings after a little bit but I like that soft diffused style that you get mixing the wet into wet see how interesting that looks I love it then I think here it's dry enough that I can add some of that same gray shadow color to the bottom half of this little awning there's this awning up here as well okay now we'll let all this dry okay now let's add some base grounds to the foliage start up in the corner up here and then just lay down using the side of a flat brush lay down some wet color and then while that's still wet go into it with some shocks of yellow and some shocks of blue and then that together will make some different shades of green which is going to be a lot more interesting leave some patches for the bright flowers and I'm just going to go all the way up to the edge of the balcony here with the green down here there's some more and then again when you move into the background your color should be less vivid so here I'm going to go to a lighter shade of green with more yellow mixed into it down here at the restaurant there's more light greens as well but then I'm going to get some bright magentas and I'm going to dot in some nice bright flowered clumps and you've got to be careful because you don't want to touch the edge and make the colors bleed but you do want them to be wet enough that they can mix together and not have really artificial edges so you want the colors to sort of blend but not too much if that makes sense don't be afraid of color remember they're going to dry two l shades lighter than you put them down and you want those stark friendly contrasts the eyes drawn to contrasts down here you do the same thing adding some of those little clumps of flowers I'm just switching from one color to another and working my way around filling in all these flower shapes okay flowers are dry so let's move into some foliage a little bit more and do some more details I'm going to mix up a gray blue so I've got some Payne's gray and some cobalt blue here I'm gonna get a fairly watery mixture of that and then carefully choke up on the brush so you get a lot of control and then add the color to the underside of your umbrella I like to outline first and then I can fill in a little bit faster so now that I have the outline done, before that has a chance to dry, I'm going to go in with a little bit more intense blue at the corner. And then let's mix in with at least one more color down here at the bottom. We'll have it shift to purple. And then throw in a yellow for some contrast here at the bottom. And the umbrella behind will make that one yellow. I'm going to preserve a line of white to help divide them visually so that will dry and then I don't want to go up here because I'll smear this so I can only stay below it so I'll add a little bit of tone to those flower pots I have a light gray chosen for those but you can choose whatever color you want let that dry and then get a little bit of cerulean blue on the brush and fill in those tables 
The cerulean blue is the lightest color, so I can fill this in quickly and then add a second coat of shadow. Just make sure you don't paint over what needs to be kept white. Th see then all of this is one big shape you can just fill in. Intensify that with some ultramarine in a few spots. Make sure that you do that in more than one spot, otherwise you'll make a bullseye and it will look like a mistake. So I'll carry that ultramarine into some of these greens and up here and maybe in this corner over here as well. And then I'll carry that ultramarine blue up into this corner as well. Going to mix up a little darker brown than the base tone of the house. And I'm going to quickly add in a shadow tone. So this is the underside of the roof. And start to add just an indication of some shutters. Then I'm going to use a blue base orange and put in this shadow shape since the top is dry now. Then you draw these little stripes of that same shadow color on the brush and let that dry. Now we're going to move forward to adding some more darks. So I'm going to get a small round and I'm going to add some details like a strip of dark color to the inside of these windows. I'm going to punch up the shadows under the awning and I can outline a bit on these windows like this, just giving them a little bit more definition. I'm going to add a little bit of gray to this arch and just enough detail that it looks like some bricks and drop in these windows just like this. And then add some little details up here. And I'll add some gray to these windows just to tone them down a bit. And then add maybe a tan. Let that mix in with it. There we go. Now let's add some of those smaller details like the chair backs. So for that we're going to bump up the darkness. We're going to mix up a brown with some Payne's gray. And let's see, I'll start on the umbrella actually. Add the top of the umbrella and then the stick going down. One piece. And then these spokes. Then you've got these chair backs that you can drop in. And these chairs that are closer to the viewer should have a little bit more visible detail. I can add a little bit of detail to these figures that are here eating their lunch. So here's the hair of this one. This man is wearing a purple shirt. And then there's some women back here. I can have them wearing that same color of purple just to save a little bit of time. Then as the people retreat to the very background, they're even lighter. So they're just kind of faceless, shapeless blobs. I make a pinhead and then I go down to thicken a body and they're just really vague. Add a little bit of dirt visible in the tops of these flower pots and then you can add a little bit more detail to the flower pot with some striping. I'll turn my paper the other way and make some controlled stripes on these doors. And then I'll get a darker green and I'll go back into my plants and add some little details. I'm filling in around the petals of those flowers and then I'm just adding some little grasses and small little leaves but because they're much darker than the other greens they're going to draw the eye and increase realism. Now we're almost done. So in this step we're just going to add some finishing details. I'm mixing up a gray blue shade and I am going to add this little building. I put down some pretty intense color and then I just let it wash out. Let that dry and I'm going to add some bars to my window balcony here. Put some heads on these ladies in the background and some flesh tone on the figures in the foreground. You can see a little bit of the elbow and the face. As you work, try to see the large shadow shapes and put them down in big pieces. To add a little bit more definition to the chairs, I'll go in with a shadow on the chairs, working around the legs and around the back. Now you might want to push it farther if you care to, or you might consider it done at this point. It's really just a matter of pushing up the details as far as you want. But when you're done, 
the last thing to do is to remove your tape and there's your simple restaurant scene so here this is kind of fun that's the first version and this is the second version you can see a few changes and if you paint yours multiple times you're going to see that the painting changes a little each time as well and that's part of the fun of painting and part of the fun of trying your hand at the same scene over and over again every time you do it you're going to grow a little bit as an artist so that concludes this month's painting tutorial I hope that you've had a lot of fun painting this scene along with me and I hope that you'll join me again next month for another painting and drawing tutorial thanks so much for watching